All right. So um, I think we are all familiar with this presentation at this point. We know uh, what ACM is, uh, what ACMS Treasury is all about. And we have been doing quite fantastic work as far as implementing, because that's what the first uh, call of duty was. And I just want to quickly go to the progress report here. Um, we have about, uh, about uh, nine unions out of the 13 that are now on, uh, 35 conferences. And uh, this one is not up to date. Let me just change this presentation. Sorry about that. I updated it yesterday. So I think I have, uh, I have a new, a, a more up-to-date one. Uh, can you still see my screen? Yes, we can. Yes. Okay, good. All right. So we are now at 10 out of 13 unions, 38 out of 51, and over 2,600 churches that are now implemented online. And this is good progress, and I think we are moving very well. Uh, as far as the numbers are concerned, uh, some of them are updating as we go. The statistics are becoming more live. So this is basically a good picture of where we are right now. Um, and I am very happy to announce to you that Zimbabwe West, IOU, and South Tome will be done in the next two months. So we'll start seeing at least the whole of the SID implemented. Uh, we are scheduling with uh, West Zimbabwe uh, to see when we can um, actually implement, but it will be very soon. And then IOU has already uh, booked their slots and uh, Sao Tome also have also booked their slots. So that is good news and we'll be working very, very earnest to, to get us all on the on the system. All right. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch now and go to, let's see where we are. I will switch my screen here and go to, uh, let's talk with uh, NCSA, my go-to conference as far as this process is concerned. All right. So after we have, um, the church treasurers have captured their transactions, they've they have done the receipting, Titan offering has been done. We now need to get to a point where we uh, do some processes at the conference. And after we do this process at the conference, it will be now time to move that information into Sunplus. So the, the, for those who, are, who might not be aware, the aim of ACMS is to become the source of all our tight income. What I mean by that is that we want all of the tight income to be captured in ACMS so that it is available for us then to record as income in Sunplus. So if you have churches that are not yet online, what we are going to do is we are going to uh, uh, implement them as manual churches. So what I'm saying is you will come on to configure treasury module over here. Uh, let's do a new one. I'm not even sure if there's any good example here, but let's just pick one and see if we can best just say we pick that one. Um, when we come here on the type, uh, on the sorry, on the type of books here, we will choose manual. What this means is that even if a church is not yet um, on uh, using the online module, we can enter a summary of their income of their type and offering as one receipt, for instance, for the whole week or for the whole month. And this will then help us to be able to get the system to calculate the remittance that is needed at the next level. So if we're at the conference, when we do this process, the system will now tell us this is how much you need to um, send to the union. So that when we come to our, um, our auditing time and making sure our income is complete, ACMS becomes a complete reference for all of our income. The good thing about this is because we have access to all of our uh, each and every receipt, number one. So we don't need to have those uh, little, uh, those was still manual books, books where we can't see the, the carbon copy of the book anymore. When we come to audit time, if the auditor says, I want to see um, this church and their receipts, you just simply come and you click on income and you come and click on Titan offering receipts and you give the auditor what they need. So this will help us to be able to make sure that all of our income is complete. So if we capture, if the treasurer has captured the churches that are online and we at the office capture the offline churches, we will now have a complete picture of our income. All right. At that point, does anyone have a question? I want us to make sure we are moving together. No one is left behind. Do we have a question at this point? We just want to make sure we understand each other. ACMS will become our reference point and backup of, for all of our type and offering income because we are able to do down to an individual church to an individual giver without having to uh, rely on any other 
system or books to do this part. Are we together so far? If you have a hand, if you have a question, please raise your hand and we'll, I will acknowledge it and we we'll discuss because it is important for all of us to, to be together at this point. We don't want anyone to be left behind. All right. So is there anyone with a question so far? Or we are good? If you are good, okay. Uh, Piri, yes, Robert, go ahead. Yes, uh, morning. Can you hear me? Yeah, very loud and clear. Okay. Um, so I just wanted to clarify on the... Um, on the offline churches. So are we mm -hmm. saying that the offline to be the responsibility of us at the conference to enter those on the system? Yes, that's what we are saying. What we are saying is it will be the responsibility of the conference people to capture that information because the books will still come. Let's say, for instance, you have a church that's in the rural area. They will still need to send their books to you. When those books come, you do an entry into a CMS, and then the process that we are going to show you now, you capture all of this information as complete into Sunplus. That is the idea, my brother. Okay, noted. All right, Tapiwa. Uh, good morning, Tembi. Um, yes. I would yes. want to, if possible, then make a clarification uh, between conference uh, transactions and local church transactions. Will we then okay. be responsible for the local church transactions as well? In terms of yes. capturing, yeah. So what we are saying, Tapua, I'll say it in an, in other words so that we are we are we are we are together. We are saying you have a church that is at a growth point in the rural area there who are still using manual books. When they send those books to the conference, we will use ACMS to receive those books, either as individual receipts or as a summary, whichever is suitable for your setup. Uh, of course, if you do it by receipt, it's even more it's more helpful when that church comes online. All of their history of giving as individuals will be available. But if it's not possible, you just take a summary of the of the of the tight income combined offering and, and all the other offerings, capture them into ACMS. And once that is done, ACMS now will be ready to take over the process and we will do the entries that then lead into Sunplan. So yes, Tapio, depending on your setup, your setup and circumstances, the conference will then still need to receive those books that have come from the local church at the conference so that we have a complete um, uh, complete income in ACMS. What we are trying to avoid, brethren and sisters, is a situation where you come to audit and some of your information is still in manual books, some of it is still in ACMS. The sooner we get this thing done, the better, because we will have one source of truth, as we say in, in computer science and in IT, we'll have one source of truth. And when the auditors need information, we'll be able to produce it for them without any hesitation. But if it's in two systems where you still have it in manual or you're posting directly into Sunplus, you will have a bit of a challenge as far as that is concerned. So this is the idea. And once we do this, ACMS will then automatically calculate what is the next remittance to the next level. So that is the point, Tapio. Is that much clearer? Um. Okay, my, my point was, I mean, pertaining to non-conference transactions for the local church. Mm -hmm. how, okay. how do we so, then, like, okay, I, that's, that's the way the, 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 the real concern was to, how do we then cater for the um, church transactions that mm -hmm. have nothing to do with the conference and above? All right. So those ones, if they, if they are not there, because normally when the receipt book comes to the conference, they are not sending their expenses and everything else. Those are non-conference entries. What we are concentrating on right now is just the income side of things. So we want to make sure we account for the tithe, the offerings, and any any other giving that is done at the local at the local church. That's that's the that's the point. Okay. Not it. Thank you. All right. Yes. And then any any your hand is up. Let's clear this point and move on. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, apologies. Um, this is Remy Hamonga, Midland West Center Conference. I think okay, it, it's the name that is the wrong there, but my name no is problem. Remy Hamonga. No yes, sir. I, I'm just trying also to make a follow up on, on the question that has been raised already. Uh, mm -hmm. My concern is to do with um, the, the, the churches. In our case, for example, I can pick to you in Mission District. Mm -hmm. I think we have about 80, 86 churches there. So now, mm -hmm. if we are, we have to record those churches uh, which are offline here at the office, I think, I don't mm -hmm. know how whether they can be summarized, but in SMH, I think we receive by names, name by All name. Right. So you will realize that the, the, the amount of work we'll do here will, will increase to record those right. churches. 
in a service, I think it will take more time on the our deadline for submitting trust funds. Mm -hmm. Hey, I think we will be really behind. All right. So Remy, the point that I made, maybe you missed a small little point I mentioned. You can do a summary, one receipt per church. So you're going to basically capture 81 churches uh, entries into ACMS. So you summarize each one of those per by month. So you'll say total type for this church for the month was X amount, you capture it into ACMS. Total offering was this amount, you capture it into ACMS. That is all that is required at this point. If you then have more manpower and you want to do it by receipt, that's why I said the circumstances will differ from conference to conference. You can go ahead and do that. But the system will allow us to have a summary entry for, for, for each of those churches. And then we use that. Those visitors are backup for that posting. Is that much clearer, uh, Remy? Yeah, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. All right. Thank you. So let's move on now. So churches, have, we have captured income. And now we get to the point where we need to make sure that we, we have... Um, we have uh, we are now uh, checking the remittances. So I'll I'll go here. Uh, you come to income. This is now at the conference at the conference level. Uh, just to make sure we are together. Treasurers have captured. They've calculated their, their remittances. Now we come into ACMS at the conference. We come and we do check remittance uh, processes. And you come to this screen. You choose the month that you are working with. In this case, we are in June. You click on search. And once this uh, comes up, you will see the names of the churches and the amounts that have been given by each church. And we start the beautiful process of capturing the income now. So what we do is I'll take an example of Advent, uh, Advent Hope here. It's an African church. We click on the dollar sign here. And once you click on the dollar sign, you now select at the conference which bank account did the remittance get paid to. And in this case, to be standard bank, the date, let's say it was yesterday, the description, you type it there. Uh, whatever the description is, is so the idea here is that when we print the bank state, the standard bank account for the conference, this uh, description here must help us to, let me just see if I can make this a little bit bigger, must help us to reconcile. If there's any transactional reference, uh, which is on the statement, I normally recommend that we use our bank statements for this process. It will make sure that we reduce errors and uh, reduce unidentified deposits and all those other problems that come. So let's use the references that are on the statement over here and then put the, the amount there. And then once we do this, we now need to tell the system which bank account at the church are we reducing this remittance by. So we come here and we say, okay, we are using this one here. And then we click on save. And once we do that, this transaction now is ready to be linked to this remittance. Okay, I'll pause right there. Any questions so far? I don't want anyone left behind, brethren and sisters. That's why I'm making sure we, we move together. Why are we doing what we're doing? Aha, that's a good question. Why are we doing what we are doing? All right. So let me just give you an example quickly. The, 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 local, church, the local church has a bank account, which they have used to pay remittances to the conference. The balance <clears> of that <throat> account is not correct until we reduce it by the amount that they've paid to the conference. So it's almost, it's a, it's a, you can call it a mini reconciliation. We are basically managing the balance of the local church, making sure it is kept up to date. What I'm saying is from, gen, from the, what, what month I mean, in July, from let's use June, from the 1st of June to the end of June, the church has been re receiving and receiving monies into their bank account, which belong both to the church and to the conference. This process is now separating the sheep from the goats. It's rem removing the conference amount and recording it on the conference books and making sure that the balance that remains at the local church is the local church fund. Is that question answered, uh, whoever asked? I think that was Sister Bridget or someone. I'm not sure who it was. Yes, it is. All right, thank you. Uh, Remy? Yes, sir. Yes, go ahead. Uh, no, no, my hand, I think it was just a mistake. I had my hand down. No problem. Piri, Robert. Boss, can you just uh, repeat that process? You didn't really right. understand. Okay, all right. That one is the best thing I will ever do for you, my brother. It's for free. We will do that again. <laughs> so what happens is we come now. We, remember, we just make sure we're together. The church treasurer has done their work. They've calculated the meters. They've even paid you as the conference what was due to you. And now it's your, it's your process now to make sure that we capture those amounts in our ACMS side of things. 
So we come under income, check remittances. We come to this page, then actually do it so that we are together. You click over there, check remittances. This beautiful page loads and you choose the month that you're working with. So if it is for June, like in this case, you now click on search, it will list for you all of your churches here. If you want to list one church, you come and you type the name of the church here, and then you say search it to just give you that church you are dealing with. When you get to this point, we look at, let's just look at the screen, maybe to also help us. We are saying for June, the total of assisted education was 72,000. The local church funds were 24,000. The local conference funds were 48,000. So how much are we expecting to see on our bank statement for this church? We're expecting to see 48,412.50. So far, so good. Now, we want to capture this amount to make sure that we reduce the local church accounts, uh, the local church ACMS bank account with the same 48,000. So we come over here, we say this money came into our conference account, Standard Bank, it came yesterday. The description, we put the name of the church over there. The transaction directions, we put it there. And then there we say 48,000. 48,000, one, two, three, whatever the cents are. Then we, 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 we now check, where was this money? Which bank account is used by this church to record remittances? We say it is this one. We click on it. When we click on save, we have now basically linked this remittance to this, uh, to this payment that was done to our conference bank account. Once we do this, the, the clearing account of the local church will now go to zero and their bank account will be reduced by 48,000. Uh, I put 400,000 there. It's, I know some people, accountants are very, very particular. 48,000. So far, so good. I think we've understood this part. Each church has a clearing account. Every time they are receiving something that belongs to the conference, it's posted into that clearing account. When we do this process, we are clearing that account to zero so that this church remains without owing anything. Anytime the church pastor or the treasurer looks at this church, they will see that it does not owe anything to the church. I hope we are together so far. Piri and uh, Mawere. Piri? Yeah, just a follow-up question. Mm -hmm. What's the difference between uh, this process that we're doing and the process we do when we're capturing deposits? All right. Indeed. Yeah, it shows that some people are using the system very well. Piri, it's nearly the same. Nearly this the same. Combi it's, it's combining the deposit, the paid de the deposit process and the linking process. So normally, what Piri is talking about, if you come under financial transactions, there's this capture deposit here. You can also do the same process. Come over here, click new, and do this process for each church in here. And then somebody must come into remittances and link the, the payment that you have just recorded. Come and link it now to the church. So this process that I'm just showing you now, which I'm showing you here, where we use this little dollar sign here, it is a combination of the two processes in one. You are recording the, de the deposit theory, and you are also linking it to the church that paid it. Uh, how do you like that theory? Is that clearer now? Mm. <laughs> All right. Yeah, yeah, it's Mr. clear. Mr. Morris, let's go. Ah, right, and the, so I, I wanted also to to echo the same sentiment to say uh, normally when we receive we receive the the deposits from the church, we will mm -hmm. now be entering them uh, into our SMS. Then I think we, I, I'm answered. I wanted to ask to say what is the difference now. Normally, you you had said we should use the bank statement in entering. You know, sometimes maybe. We will not wait for the bank statement, but as the deposits are coming by the treasurers, we are already captured. Yes. That is correct, my brother. Uh, we, we, we have different realities in different economies. I think we can all agree. Zimbabwe operates different from, from Botswana and so on. But I want you to get the principle so that whatever applies to you, you will be able to use. Oh, by the way, I will throw this one in for free. We are now able to import bank statements. So the conference can import their bank statement and it will help in the auto linking and auto, uh, we are basically automating things. It will help us to cut this process by half the time. So I want you to also be aware. So the sooner you start using technology, the better <laughs> you will work because all of these things will be able, we'll be able to work on them a little bit faster. Uh, I'll take two hands, Morris and JP, and then we move on to the next step. Morris. Okay. 
in North Zimbabwe conference, most of our churches like uh, Forex accounts, they don't operate bank mm -hmm. accounts, accounts or USD accounts. Mm -hmm. Is there a facility when we are linking because we want to reconcile the local church bank and the mm -hmm. conference bank? So All if right. churches so Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Bank what, what do they do? They deposit right. direct. They don't do transfers. Okay, so where do they deposit the money, my brother? They deposit into the conference bank. Okay, so that's fine. So, so the money. So so here is the here is the beauty of this system. If it was they say this is the conference bank where they deposited, you will record the deposit here. Then you go to the to the listed cash account of that church because that's where we are going to reduce. Uh, the payment they don't they didn't do the bank side they used reset cash so you then reduce their reset cash because their reset cash will be overstated until you do this process and reduce it to, to record the remittance that was sent to the conference is that clear my brother okay all right okay uh jp let's go okay uh good morning tembi my name is a piece of woodlands conference okay uh, I, I need a bit of clarity on uh, the process for check remittance. Mm -hmm. uh, my understanding is that the church accounts is, are affected at the point of capturing deposits. So when I'm capturing my deposits, I choose now which account is being affected, mm -hmm. whether receipted cash or the bank. And then from okay. there, that's when we move to come and check remittance. Now, the issue is when I come to check remittance, Mm -hmm. The amount that shows on the check remittance is the total of what I've captured on the deposits. Mm -hmm. Yes. Now, when I come again and choose which account is being affected here, how do I split? Because I have some churches that could use both check and um, and cash. So, which All account right. do I choose on at, at this stage at check remittance? All right. So, my brother. Uh, I've always told uh, a lot of people in my trainings and, and, and so on that in ACMS, ACMS is like any accounting we do. You can do one entry and life is good. So what I'm basically saying, you could almost ent enter, even in Sunplus, enter one expense for the whole month and you have reduced your bank by that expense. Enter one income amount and life is good. Everything is balancing. But if you do lump sums, and there's something that needs to be corrected or reversed. Now you have created a puzzle for yourself, which you are going to have a very beautiful time trying to correct. So I would advise you, do entries separate. Each entry, if they did a transfer, record it separate. If they did a, a cash deposit, depo uh, record it separate. When you come to this point, you will now be able to link or by ticking. Let me just show you what it looks like. You will have entries, there are four entries that don't have uh, this little tick box. You tick the four entries that correspond to that remittance total, and that solves your problem. So that if there's a problem, you will be able to deal with it. Are you able to see my screen, people? Uh, hello? Yes. Is, okay. yes, we because can see your screen. Yes, yes we can. Please. All yes, right, someone can. saying no there. OK, I saw someone saying no. Yes, there, we can. It's, it's OK. All right, that's fine. So. Each entry that is done by the church, you capture it as a separate entry. So that when there's a reversal, there's a correction, there's an error, you are easily able to identify. But if you put the one million as a total, one million kwacha for the month, but that one million is made up of four different deposits. When you come to the point where you need to reconcile or something is not happy, you will have a beautiful puzzle to solve. I've said some people love solving puzzles. And that is fair, that is well and good. But don't create puzzles for yourself that uh, don't add value when things go wrong. So let's record each entry, my brother, as it happens. If our bank statement is 45 lines, let's make sure we have 45 entries captured in ACMS so that when something goes wrong, when the bank makes a mistake, which rarely happens, but sometimes happens, and we have to correct that, we don't have problems. So that is my advice to you on that matter. I hope I've addressed your question, my brother. Uh, you can uh, uh, click a thumbs up if you are happy so that we move on. All right. So just to recap so that we are together, brethren and sisters, there are two approaches. You can come and say capture deposit, use this process. Oh, by the way, if you if you have separate of, a separation of roles in your office, somebody just, their job is just to capture deposits on its own. They can come and just concentrate on capturing these deposits 
or receipting. Those who get to receive cash at the conference, this is the place where you come and you capture, and it actually even produces a receipt for you, which you can give the treasurer. So this is what we want to be able to do. Use this if somebody's dedicated, their dedicated role is capturing. They just do this. If someone else now needs to check and make sure what was captured and what the check was supposed to capture is in alignment, we now come and do check remittances. So these are two different roles. Capture deposit is one role. Under income, check remittances is another role. And if it's two different people, even better. Somebody's capturing, somebody's linking the captured information into ACMS and making sure that everything that was captured is agreeing with what the church uh, collected. So far, so good. I hope we are together. I don't think there is anyone left behind. But if there is, please, we are here to make sure that no one is left behind. Let us, let us uh, um, ask our questions and make sure we are together. All right. So let's move on now. So the church, come back here. The church now is linked. Everything is, is green. You see the figure 10 green like this. It means what was expected and what was paid are now agreeing. They are together. We are in happiness there. Mbele, let's go. Oh, Botswana. Yeah, I have a, <laughs> yeah it's Botswana. I have a user with a question. Thank you. User, go ahead. Um, can you? Yes, uh, Judith from Botswana Conference. Um, I, I realized that. Yes, mm -hmm. I realized that my treasurers they captured payment on their side. Of my my <laughs> payments. Right, so, right, right, right. I'm happy to hear that question. I'm happy to hear <laughs> no. that question, Judith. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm interjecting you there, but I think I understand what you are referring to. So what happens, brethren? We we in a so when I check my deposits. Mm -hmm. So when I check my deposits, I realize that it shows that the treasurer has, has captured payments. Uh -huh. if there's something. All right. Yes. Oh, okay, Judy. We will we will review this conference by conference, and you can advise us what you want to do. But we realize there are some conferences that were <laughs> falling behind and we're having big trouble uh, with um, with their with their recording. So what we did is we enabled a church. Let me see if I have anyone that did it here. Uh, yeah, there we go. So this church here, short deposits recorded by church treasurer. We allowed church treasurers to be able to record their own remittances that they made to the conference because the conference was falling behind and now we're back. The church was having a wrong balance by six months, seven months, and it was not reconciling. So to solve that problem, the system now allows treasurers to also record their remittance uh, to the conference. And the job of the conference now is just to check whether this 61,000, which was uh, recorded, is actually in agreement with what they see on their bank statement. So you have two options as a conference. You can encourage your treasurers to record their own remittances, or you can record the remittances for them. It's up to you. I would, depending on the setup of your operations and the size of your team, it might be worthwhile sending this work to the local treasurer to do it. And then all you are doing is checking and closing the remittances. Judy, is that uh, is that uh, explanation clear, my sister? No one left behind. So when I accept, I just click on this blue blue arrow. Yeah, you do what you need to do there. And uh, what, what will happen now, when you go to this particular church, you will now see this remittance get is already ready to be linked under check remittance. You just tick the box yeah. to, 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 to link it, and your job is done. So if you work that way, it will make life easier. But remember, it also increases the probability of errors. If the treasurer that transposes 61,832 instead of 61,823, you now need to make sure that it's correct because if it's not correct, <laughs> we'll have an error and things will not balance. So far, so good. Okay. So far, so good. Yeah. I have not spoken about any complicated scenarios yet. We'll talk about that after we understand the flow. So that is, uh, I'm going to follow up with that one. All right, let's continue. So this is a feature that has now come and it's something that uh, some conferences are very happy about. But in conferences where somebody is capturing dedicated capture in the conference, it's not good news because now you now need to be careful of duplicating. 
you have the treasurer has captured the six to one thousand. You also come and you capture the six to one thousand. Now we have two six to one thousands in the in the system. So you now need to decide what are you going to do, and then make sure that you then stick to uh, whichever method you have decided to go. Uh, some of you have noticed this little camera here. I hope you are seeing it here. The system is soon being is so, will soon be able to also digitally capture. So the treasurer will be able to capture that deposit for you, so that you have a graphical, a pictorial reference point for that uh, deposit slip. We don't want treasurers coming to our offices, brethren. Treasurers are volunteers. They are not paid a single cent to do the work that we are paid to do. So please, anything that reduces their work and makes sure that their life is easier is most welcome. Let's not hold them hostage. We are not, uh, we are not, paying, we are not paying them for the work they do or for their time. So any technology that will make life easier for them, let us embrace yesterday so that uh, we, we, are, we, are, we, we, we are happy there. Uh, I think a lot of you might agree with me on that point. All right. So, so far, we've done this part. Uh, if you want to see deposits that were paid by, by, um, by treasurers, you can come and say, show, click on this box, show deposits recorded by treasurer, and do a search. And it will only show you the deposits that have been captured by, by treasurers. And then you, you avoid duplicating them. So this system, I think you have all agreed, this system is very smart. And it's been done very well. This will make sure that we reduce. So you start by, if I was dedicated, if I was the, the accountant dedicated to capturing deposits, I'll just make sure I first tick here in the morning when I arrive in the office and then search. Then I see these two. I cross them out on my statement so that I don't capture them again. And then I start my new batch and start the capturing process again. I think some of you have seen this import here, uh, this import step here. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's interesting things. Uh, sooner or later, you'll be able to come and select your bank, select a, a, a document here, and then choose the, the bank statement file that comes from the bank and load it. And the system will capture all of those entries without you having to capture this manually one by one. What does the church say? Uh, I was hoping to hear a Amen. Amen. Accountants are not, very happy. are not very happy people, so I'll leave you like that. It's not my problem. <laughs> All right. Okay. So let's continue now. So after we have we have captured, uh, we have done our capturing process here. We have linked. The next step that's next is to clock. When it's green, you click this lock button. When you click this lock button, magic happens. It reduces the bank statement amount at the church. It clears the clearing account. And it now includes this income as part of the calculation for the union remittance. I will say that slowly. When we click the lock button, we are now posting the equivalent of posting an entry in Sunplus, importing ledger, and then we post it. We are basically saying the amount that we have captured in the dollar sign, which is now turned green, equals the amount we're expecting. This entry is now ready to be used in the next calculation for the union remittance. It is now included in our statistical recordings. It's now reducing the balance at the local church, clearing the clearing account at the local church happiness. All right, so far so good. We are together, so far so good. Any questions? Anyone with a question? Anyone with a question so far? All right, I'll move on. If a question comes up, let's deal with it. Right, so as you go down your list, you start seeing that uh, you have a lot of churches that are green and closed and you have closed it uh, and everything is good. And we can now tell that we are expecting 5.6 million in this conference. That is what we're expecting. So if this money is not in our account, somebody must now start phoning these treasurers to say, hey, a treasurer or church pastor, we're expecting 43, uh, uh, 47,000 from your church. Why is it not there? Somebody must now start answering. I hope you are hearing what I'm saying. So this is the beauty of this, because all of these churches that have been captured here now need to be ready to be able to, we can now check what is the local church are doing. Are they on time? What is happening? Is there any amount missing? That's the beautiful thing for us to know. And in, in so that we don't waste too much time, if you come under your report at the conference, you will find there's a beautiful thing here that is called uh, remittance control here. This report, Let's take for the period of uh, May. We will tell you which churches have not yet calculated remittance, if the money has not yet been received. 
and not closed. If I do this, let me just do one so that we can explain. I click on list. It will give me a report that will tell us whether we, how, which churches are far behind, which churches are in trouble, which ones need help. This is where things happen. So I'll make this one a little bit bigger so that I explain it for those who have never used it. So here in May, in this conference, there's one church here that is left behind. This church here, they are still in May. They're not yet closed. So the income of the conference is affected by everyone for that period that is ticked here. Let me just explain the menu here. One means remittance not yet calculated by the treasurer. So these are the treasurers that you now follow up and say, hey, church uh, clip scrut in West, please help us because you are left behind. You are not up to date. If you run this report and you see one from, from December, all this whole thing is full of one, it means that you, <laughs> you have a big problem. Your income is incomplete. You are going to be qualified by the auditors because your income is income. You have money that is still lying at the church. Your income is understated. I hope you are hearing me, brethren and sisters. This is the beauty of ACMS. If we ever implement it for any other reason, this is, this, this is the only, this is one of the major reasons why we should implement. This report at the conference level tells us that we have 11 churches here. We have two churches left behind here. We have another three here. We have another, so these periods are all understated by this one or two, one or two, one or two. If these numbers at the bottom are big, it means that for this one item, which is calculated remittance by treasurer, a lot of churches have not closed their batches. I don't know where the money is, and I don't know whether that money has come to the conference. We have a big problem. It's chaotic. It's chaos right there, right there, right one time. Let me see this question. Does the system have a mechanism to detect duplicate deposit slips? For instance, the treasurer may capture deposit twice. Last week, deposit submitted uh, in the current week. Mr. Uh, Mr. George, uh, thank you for that question. That question is very good. The, the, the system, yes, can detect uh, duplicates when you look and see them. And when you reconcile, you will see those duplicates. That's why we encourage the church treasurers to do the reconciliation. We encourage you at the conference to also do your reconciliation so that you pick up any of these duplicates. It could be two amounts that are the same. We don't want to automatically classify them as a duplicate accidentally. So a human eye, that's where AI is not going to replace accounting very soon. There are some things that still need human eyes to be able to do. And this is one particular case. I hope I've answered you, Brother George. We, the, the church treasurer needs to reconcile. What we are saying is the local church bank account at the bank, the amount they have at the bank must equal what is in ACMS. If I print my ACMS bank statement and I print the bank statement of the bank, the two of them must have the same amount. It is imperative that that process is done every month before we close. NCSA have a good example of this. They do it very well, and they will tell you that it has saved them from a, no, a lot of nightmares. When the local bank account of the church is equal to the bank statement in ACMS, that treasurer is doing a fantastic job, and you will not see any of these outstanding things and these things here that are appearing here. All right, I've said quite a mouthful. Do we have any questions so far? Piri, let's go. Yes, can you just go back to, to the screen for checking your meetings? Okay, I'm here. No, the other one, not this one. Oh, here. Yes. Aha, uh -huh, I'm there. Yeah, so um, we're saying, okay, so we've done the dollar sign and there it is green. Mm -hmm. but now, what happens if the payment is not agreeing with, with what they are supposed to, to give? Let's say they have under-deposited. <laughs> yeah. Or they've yeah, over-deposited. What, no, what happens no, in yeah. that scenario? Now, now you're talking, uh, you're you're talking you. now. Uh, someone has accidentally unmuted themselves there. I will help you. All right. There we go. All right. So, Piri, this is the beauty of ACMS also. If a treasurer is under-remitted, in, in, in June, they were supposed to give us 30, uh, 48,000. Let's go stick there. They, they deposited 40,000. You have recorded everything is correct. You will still close the batch. When you close, the system will automatically carry over that balance in, as a requirement for the next remittance. When the treasurer clicks calculate remittance in the following period, 
the system. Yeah, let me show you what I'm talking about. Come over here, let's click here. You see down here, uh, right here, let's make this bigger so that you can have a look and enjoy it. All right, let's come here. The system will say, what you collected in the current period is 48,000. The remittance spending at the office, which is the difference of what you under remitted last month, will be here. And it will now require you to remit more, including what is due, currently due, and what is outstanding. What does the church say, Mr. Peter? Okay, now the church says, I mean. <laughs> All right, so, so when it is over remitted, let's say the current mm -hmm. amount is 48,000. These people then put 55,000. It will now say you have over remitted. We are reducing your new remittance by that overpayment you did. So you will repay less so that your clearing account is always at zero. Brethren, if you have known the headache of recording trust funds at the conference level from the churches, this is a welcome relief. The system automatically mandates us to always clear our clearing accounts. As long as these processes we are talking about are done. So take all the shortcuts you may, you may want. Don't complete these processes. Let churches go into unreconciled amount. Now the state cash is a thousand, there's a thousand entries not done. And the, the recording, you are going to meet the auditor. A day of recording is coming. You are going to get qualified your income. I hope it doesn't lead to a disclaimer. But it will make sure that the system will make sure that your sins will find you out. <laughs> Piri, are we together, my brother? Yeah, yeah we are together. <laughs> All right. Uh, there's another hand there. I, I'm afraid of butchering the pronunciation Van Hiden Van Hiden or something like that. I hope so. I hope I <laughs> yeah, let's go, uh, brother or sister. Let's go with your question. I'm Sandy. I'm Sandy. Oh. I wanted ah, to Flo. ask. Mm. Yes, it's me. I wanted to ask that we have some uh, churches that remit per month, but um, you'll notice that it's, when it comes to checking remittances, it breaks down. It breaks them to. It breaks it down to four weeks, of which we would right. have just one deposit. All right, perfect question. All right, so that means, my sister, in essence, we need to change that church from weekly to monthly cycle. That's, that's, the, that's the neat way of doing it. But you will, you will see that churches that are on the uh, weekly cycle, there are four entries here, my sister. So you will close the first one without recording any remittance because nothing was recorded. Close the second one, nothing was recorded. Close the third one, nothing was recorded. And then on the fourth one, you will now go to the dollar sign, capture the total of those four weeks, and the system will be very happy with you. Did I answer the question, my sister? Ah, Flo, if you heard me, you heard me. Let's move on. Any other questions? Any other inputs that we have? All right, we are getting closer to the end. I'm about to finish my section. Uh, Mr. Mbele, get ready for the next part. All right, so we have closed now. Everything has been closed. Now we are looking at where do we get the information for Sun Plus? So I'm going to quickly go there. All right, so first of all, this remittance report here, the importance, okay, let me, let, me, let me slow down a little bit also. Let me also now, there are some who might not be convinced that the remittance report is important. One critical part I've told you is that it will look at the current balance and show whether you've under or over remitted and then tell you what it tells the treasurer what to pay. Another important part, if you now start using DPO or you have entries that are coming via other methods of payment, that take money directly to the conference. This part will now be critical. Let me try and explain it slowly. This part is a bit confusing for most people. I am praying that the Holy Spirit helps me to explain it nicely. What we are saying is, maybe let me, let me, let me do an Excel. Let's do an Excel here. Maybe it will make life easier for us. Are you, brethren, still able to see my screen, my Excel screen here? Perfect. Yes. yes. All right. Perfect. What we are now saying, let me move closer the screen to me so that I'm able to help you. Right. A church, this is church A. Let me click here on my on my Excel. 
Catch A. Ee, this is type. For simplicity, I'll just have type and offering. So Church A says for week one or for month one, let's use people are mostly on monthly. Month one, uh, the recorded type, the church that are recorded type of 2000 for simplicity. And the offering was, uh, let's say, 3000 for simplicity. Right. So here we'll say conference. Let's just put our conference here. Conference. Uh, anyone will tell you that the conference is expecting them to pay the 2000 plus this divided by two. They're supposed to pay 3.5. Did I do correctly, uh, ladies and accountants, ladies and gentlemen? I stopped accounting a long time ago. I'm now an IT guy. So this IT guy is telling you this is the trust fund. Is that correct? Yes. All right, perfect. Month two, the church treasurer records 1,000. The offering they record is, uh, let's say for this example, 2,000. And then we now know that the remittance is 1,000 plus that divided by two, it's supposed to be 2,000, that's the trust fund. But, they were DPO. I come and put DPO. DPO is an online payment uh, system. South Africa and other places where we are implementing this. DPO recorded, let's say, for instance, uh, 4,000. And, and this 4,000 was uh, offering, for instance. Are we together? Let's say offering here. Are we following my example nicely, brethren? Yes. All right. Here's the record now. Yes. What ACMS will do, it will say the conference is now owing that church 2000 right? So half of, uh, half of uh, 4000 is 2000 ah, Sorry. Uh, somebody uh, needs to mute themselves. Wow. Mr. Nyasha. Mr. Nyasha. There we go. All right. Uh, what did I do? Okay. Divided by two. 2,000 is what the conference is holding on behalf of this church. But what is their trust fund? 2,000. Are we together? The system now will go and say what the conference is expecting, less what they owe the church. This church is not paying any remittance that month. What does the church say? <laughs> Please repeat that, Tembi. Uh -huh. we, are, we are confused. We are confused. <laughs> I wanted you to be confused because accountants uh, know everything. So I want to make sure you are thoroughly confused so that you appreciate what ACMS does for you. Let me say the scenario again. The local church treasurer receded 1,000 time. We are together. They receded 2,000 offering. The trust fund we have agreed is 2,000. Are we together so far? Yes. 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 Right. Yes. Then, yes. then a third party, which is called DPO, a company that does online payments. Some members use this now for in the Seven Me app. They use DPO or online payment or any other method that brings money directly to the conference. The system is now able to say, okay, we collected on behalf of the conference and the church 4,000 in offering. I said offering. Make sure this example is deliberate so that you appreciate the reconciliation that happens between the, the ACMF and the money that have been sent directly to the conference. So an offering of 4,000 from the same church in month two was received. And we now know that 50% of this 4,000 was supposed to be, belongs to the church. Are we happy yeah. there so far? Yeah. Are we happy? So mm -hmm. this money is now sitting at the conference already, the 2,000. But the system is saying, oh, the, co the church was supposed to give us 2,000, but you already have 2,000 on behalf of the church. So the reconciliation is now zero. No one is supposed to pay anyone. No one is owing anyone between the church and the conference. What does the church say? Amen. Aha. Uh -huh. So this church is not submitting mm -hmm. anything this month. ACMS will say to them, when they calculate remittance, zero. You don't owe anything. When you now come to that beautiful screen where we were, uh, here, 
it will say zero because what is in their current account is 2,000. What is pending at the conference is also 2,000 and the difference will be zero here. The remittance paid will be zero. That church is done. There is no problem. So if you do, then now let me come back now. Let me come back. If you start using ACMS and you are not completely understanding, you are not completely following the cycles that we are telling you, this problem will now come where now you can't reconcile what the church owes and what the conference owes. There's no the reconciliation will be now need will be now needed to be done manually. And you are going to have a nice, nice day reconciling that. And it's not <laughs> worth your time. I can tell you now. What is worth your time is doing the process we are discussing right now and making sure that whatever happens in ACMS is then captured into SunPlus as final figures. When we now need to get audited and we now need to trace what happened, ACMS will provide us with all the information that we need. I'm, I'm happy we are together now. <laughs> Don't worry. If, you are not, if we are not together, uh, follow up with me for extra lessons. You know, in class, we have always, always those other uh, extra lessons that are offered after the lesson. Yes, so we will offer you extra lessons for this one. Uh, yes, Matabata, let's hear you. Okay, my question now is if on the DPO, somebody has decided to, to say some, some money is offering and another money is for the local church, mm -hmm. how is the local church going to get their money? All right, so Masabata, the same example applies. Let's go back to it. This DPO transaction was receipted. These entries that were supposed to go to the church, if there was a pathfinder amount here, it will be posted to this church's pathfinder account. So DPO is integrated with ACMS. It knows where the money is supposed to go, which particular department at the local church, if it was offering, it will put it where the normal offering goes. If it was specified that this amount is for church building, it will put the money into the church building account of the local church in ACMS. So when, how, often, the, mm -hmm, how often ahead. does the DPO pay out to the conference and to the local church? Okay, that's a very specific question that we are still working together on, Masarata. We'll continue working on, uh, together on that one. But do you appreciate the logic at least? Yes, yes, I do. All right. So the DPO issue, we are working on it. I managed to do something. I'll follow up with you out of court with that one. But yes, the system is able to deal with this complicated reconciliation automatically. All right, Piri, let's go. Yes. Um. Just, just a quick one. I don't know if I'll be off topic. You, you mentioned the seven me. Mm -hmm. Now, um, are we saying that um, in seven me members are now able to directly pay to the conference account because currently it's the seven me is only being able to be linked to the church account and not the conference account. All right. So, Piri, that is a, a, conf a conference-specific configuration that we do. If you want people to pay directly to the conference bank account using 7 me, it's also possible and it's beautiful because all the amounts that come then are reconciled. If you want them to pay to the local church account, it's also able to handle that, but you can only have one or two of those configurations. So that is a conference-specific setup that you we will need to customize for you to be able to do that. But whichever way you go, the system will now be able to reconcile. When you process those payments via 7Me, the system will know where the money is and update that auto reconciliation, which I was talking about right here. I hope you appreciate the response I've given you, Piri. Okay, no, I've understood. All right. Masarata, another bite at the cherry. <laughs> All right. The DPO, it, 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 it kicks in when somebody does and a card payment, isn't it? Uh, uh, yeah, uh, card payment, uh, card payment. Yes, that's that's yeah, that's why it's it's really working. It's just for okay. card payment. If somebody does a then, card payment, mm -hmm. yeah. But then when you go to Seven Me, of course your card is already loaded there. It doesn't mm -hmm. say pay to the conference. It says pay to the church. It gives you the the account number of your church. So how right. does it decide that now? Is going to send the money to the conference, unlike when people do right. EFTs. All right, my sister, if you use card, the money goes to the conference, period. Okay? That one is okay. okay. If if you use EFT, it will it will it will take the money where you specify. So if it's the church, it will say if the bank account of the church is linked there, 
it will take that money. If you use that bank account, it will then make sure that money is in your local church and it's, it's reconcilable uh, after it has been checked. Okay, thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, at this point in juncture, uh, let me see if is, if there's anything pending on my side uh, of the presentation before I hand over. Let me just come back over here. All right, I've spoken about that. The other thing that I want you to also be aware of, uh, which is just a, a side uh, information that you need to be aware. As you can see, we are slowly, not slowly, <laughs> slowly is a, is, a, is, a bad, is a bad one. We are moving to ACMS for our conference income side of things. We will need to adjust our processes in the conference office. When I say processes, I mean our workflow will need to be updated. Why I'm saying this, why it's important, is we have these seven, eight functions here that will now need to be done as the new job descriptions. Call it what you want. We need to be repurposed because now we are doing things digitally. We need eight functions done. How you do these functions? Uh, whether there are eight different people, whether there are two different people, or there's one person doing it, internal control needs to be checked. Siri will come and tell you about everything about internal control. You can't have the same person uh, who is recording the deposits, also checking whether they, they did the correct deposit. It would be good for this to be separated. So I have sent this document to all of us. Those who don't have it, uh, I'm putting it into your chat. If you go to your chat, uh, you will find this file just now. I want you to be able to have this document. Start thinking about repurposing your treasury department at the conference because you will now have new things that come and that are needed to be done because of the new process that we are doing now in this process. I've also had conferences that are saying we are too busy to do process in ACMS double work. If you Implement all of your churches as soon as possible. It does not become double work. It becomes a new workflow. But if you still have one leg in the manual and one leg in the ACMS and some in, in Sunplast, you are going to have a nightmare. And I know someone will say, we are, our income is qualified because of ACMS. <laughs> in our accountants always have someone to blame for things. Uh, I'm telling you now, this is mid-year, July. It's recorded. I have a video which I'll share with every auditor to tell you that I told you in July that please complete this process so that your income is complete as soon as possible. So that is something that I just want to say there on the record. Could you please explain what is DPO, please? Uh, all right. Okay, cool. DPO is a company that we use to receive card payments. Uh, in summary, that's, that's what it is. But uh, I can quickly just show you here. If you come to save and me dot app, save and me is this application here, brother theory. You can come and sign in there. You can retain your title and offer and use a debit or a credit card. So for you to be able to do that, you need a payment gateway. So if I come in and I say uh, 400 runs and I say next, it will ask me, do you want to do an EFT? I've already done the EFT for this one. Or do you want to pay using a card? So if I say I want to pay using a card, it will now come over here and say use uh, my Visa or MasterCard. Then it will open up this beautiful screen here, which is DPO. And if I put my credit card here, brother Siri, and uh, do my things here, okay, and click on pay, my 400 for type, is going to go to the Trans Orange Conference right there. The reference for the payment is this one, and life is good. We are actually now working on a process where if you do this, the system will automatically issue you with a receipt. No treasure attaches the transaction, no conference entries needed, it is automated. Currently, it works very well in South Africa where we have integrated it. Other countries are soon to follow as per need. But let's first understand how the system works then when we do these other things, it will help. If you want, also it allows those in South Africa, if you come to SID EFT, which is uh, not SID for SID, but the payment system, it will also allow you to log into your bank account here. If I bank with FNB, 
it will allow me now to come and log into bank, uh, FNB and automatically transfer the money from my bank account into the Confluence bank account and issue my receipt for title 400. Ah, yes, 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 yes. yes. Thank you very much. I hope you appreciate the technology and where it's going. <laughs> so brother Thierry, I hope that one is a beautiful one. You have understood what I'm talking about. All right, those who don't uh, come for extra lessons. All right, there's another nice question here. It's a direct one, so I won't say who is asking it so that we are together. Um, direct questions are direct, so I will not say who you are. Kindly help me clear my understanding of what you explained using the process of capturing deposit and also using check remittance using the dollar sign, which method should be used at the conference level. All right, let me, let me summarize again. Uh, let me come over here. Where is my, where is my thing now? Oh, 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 here we go. All right. So my brother, was, I think it's sister or brother. If you, and if you followed what I was trying to explain, let me start over here. Where is my, here, here it is, my PDF. There are tasks that the conference needs to do. One of them is deposit or recording. And the other process is check remittance. And the other process is close remittance. These you need to do. These three processes. Every conference must be doing these three processes. If you are not doing these three processes as the conference, you are setting up yourself for a qualified income worst case disclaimer. I hope we are together so far. These three processes need to be done so that your income cycle is completed. So, the, side, the, the dollar sign uh, that my brother is asking or sister is asking is these two together. You are basically recording the deposit and checking the remittance. It's the same thing. So you can either have somebody separately doing this part where you are doing the deposit recording or have somebody else doing the check remittance or do both of these at the same time. The system will not refuse. I hope I've answered your question depending on your configuration in your office and how things are laid out, you have options to use one or both of those steps in one. I must tell you, South Africa is very cold today. Very, very cold. Yeah, next question, another direct one. As a conference, seven me is still not working. Are we unable to process the transactions at the conference? Please help Woodlands Conference. Okay. Please contact me after this. Let's look at that and deal with it, Woodlands Conference. All right, thank you very much. We are together now. Um, I think the only thing that's left for my side, I'm done. I've shown you the things that we need to do. I've sent you the file. If you go into your chat in, 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 um, in Zoom here, you will find a, a document that I want you to refer to. Masarata, uh, your question will be the last one before I hand over. All right, Tembi, I just want to know if I do seven me, shouldn't I be mm -hmm. barred from clearing myself, like from, from resetting myself? Should it, shouldn't it be like it says no? Karabo will do it. Okay, uh, say it slowly, my sister. Your question is a bit uh, fast for me. I'm also right. a bit slow. What are, give me a scenario. Let's do an example. Let's Master do a scenario of, what? yeah, I'm giving you an example. If I, if I, if I remit, through seven me, mm -hmm. and I'm also using uh, ACMS at work. Uh, shouldn't mm -hmm. it uh, disallow me from resetting myself? Or it doesn't right. really matter. All right. So if you use seven me, my sister, you are the one. The person using seven me is the one who's doing the resetting. Let's understand that part first. So okay, Tim Moyo opens opens up his seven me like I just did right now. I go to seven me, I do my 400 type. When I click submit, that process, uh, it goes into the system. At the conference, if I'm also the same person who's clearing those seven me transactions, that's where the conflict might arise. If I'm yes, that's what, what I'm asking. Saying. That's what yes. I'm asking. So, so it is advisable for someone else to do it. That is the advice. But the so bridge of the system is, uh, 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 the system has enough controls that if you do that and it's a fraudulent offering, <laughs> you hear where that is going very wrong. If it's a fraudulent offering, we will catch each other on reconciliation. 
definitely. But to avoid it, avoiding the appearance of evil, let somebody else do it. I even advise this when we are cancelling the receipt. A church that can cancel their own receipt, my sister, when they capture in ATML. But for their for the avoidance of appearance of evil, let someone else do it. Your assistant or even the conference in cases where it's possible. Let, let's just separate our for internal control purposes. Let us be able to do that. It will make our lives very, very easy. So right, the there's system, another. Mm -hmm. the, the system cannot automatically say, oh, this is Masabata. She's the one who did no. seven. So she no, cannot no, no. be able to. It can't. No, not yet. Uh, we are not yet that sophisticated. We are not yet there, my sister. Oh. Uh, and, and maybe the value of getting there might, I'm not sure whether there's a little value in doing that, but yeah, we just need to do it ourselves. That part is not yet uh, automated. We need to do it manually for now. Okay, last question, please. That uh -huh. when, you, when, <laughs> when you click on the dollar sign, that mm -hmm. uh, window which appears, mm -hmm. can you make it to be able to move? What? Because right now it sits at one place. You try to move it, it doesn't move. You need to close it so that you can be able to see what you want to see. Can you be able to make it move ah. like other apps? Okay, let me let me help you with that one, my sister. Moving that window might not happen, but here is the beauty of our system. Can you see? Are you looking at my screen now, my sister? Are you seeing my screen? Yes. You can right click any of these menu and say open a new window. Can you see this one? If I do that. It will open that window in a new window. And if you have two screens, which I advocate for every accountant to have, you need to have two screens. You can move this one window on its own and the other one on its own. So you have two windows open where you are clicking the dollar sign and another window where you are checking whatever you are checking. You have solved okay. the problem. That's fine. All right. Okay, cool. All right. Thank you very much, everyone, for listening and for following. I hope that I have added a bit of chaos in your life. Uh, that was the intention. If I have failed to do that, uh, please uh, bear with me. I will, I will get back to you in making sure that you have chaos and making sure that things don't work as well. Um, let me also now go forward to the part where, oh, I still have one more question. Manual. Ah, we don't do manuals in ACMS. <laughs> Why don't we do manuals in ACMS? Because we do videos. If you go to our YouTube channel, uh, YouTube, and you go to ACMS Treasury, come here, look for ACMS Treasury module. You will see a beautiful place here called ACS mo ACM module. And there are a lot of videos here that answer a lot of your, your manual question. Because we realize that uh, manuals get obsolete very quickly. And even the videos also get, but it's easier to do a video than typing and writing and pictures and stuff. No, let's watch videos, let's watch movies and then follow on the movies, it will help us. All right. Okay, uh, the other complicated questions that are one-on-one, -on -one, uh, let's, let's address them as such, uh, and we deal with them as we go. Yeah, there are some churches wanting to authorize their own ACMS uh, transaction. Let's deal with that as we go. It will help us as we do that. Uh, which other question do I have here? Uh, okay, we, are, we can't hear anything, though the picture is here. All right, there's something wrong with your device uh, if you can't hear us. Uh, but I'll also send you the recording so that you can watch this movie. It's one hour long so far, and I want to, stand, to stop it here so that Mr. Mbele can come and take over from where we are. And then let me just show you one last thing before I go. Um, if you want the information you'll use in Sun Plus, um, there's a beautiful place here where you come. It's under financial, it's called summary, monthly summary, you click over there. Now you're able to click on, let's take a church. Let me give you an example so that we are together. Uh, let's go back to check remittance so that we follow nicely. I just want to show you the source of information which we'll be using in Santa. So here's a good example. This church here is called Advent Heaven. We copy it. We have 36,000 here, 37,141. And now we want to be able to get information we will need to post in Sun Plus. So we come under income, uh, sorry, after fi under financial, come to summary, monthly summary. And we come and we put that church there, Advent Heaven, we click there. We say group by remittance. This one will give you from the first to the last day of the month, as it is stipulated here. Group by remittance is the best one because it will show us exactly what we need to do. So I'll come to June here, come to June also. 
and I'll say list. Oh, by the way, if you see this button running away like it is doing right now, just reduce the zoom of your screen. Uh, it will now be smaller, but it will fit everything. Click on that list. And this is the report that will make your lives easier um, as far as moving information into Sunflower. So you'll see that that 37,100 is agreeing to the remittance because we have grouped this entry by remittance. So this would be now showing you where the title of the conference is and all the information that you need to capture into Sun Plus. All right. Uh, I see a hand. Okay, the hand. Let's go hand. All right. Uh, I saw a hand. Let's go. Hello. Yes, go ahead. Okay. Thank you. I'm uh, from South Zambia Conference. Uh, Michelle okay. Monti. Mm -hmm. yes, uh, I've got uh, several questions. Uh, mm -hmm. Maybe the first one to begin with is uh, the way you were explaining when you started, um, when we get to a situation where all the churches, even those that are offline, we upload the information on SEMS. Mm -hmm. Are we looking forward to a time when there will be a link between SEMS and Sunplus in terms of maybe there's a, a, a download from ACMS, which we can easily upload in, in, in some parts. <laughs> All right, I'll leave that beautiful question to Mr. Mbele uh, to address so that he gives you a little bit more information. But the answer is yes, that is, yeah, we are, we are actually working actively. This, this process we are doing will also help us as we move uh, data from ACMS and make it an upload so that you just download the file, upload it into Sunplus, and yeah. the entry is posted. Uh, what does the church say? Amen. Amen. Ah, okay. uh, th th those who are expecting to hear that today, please implement all of your churches. I am, I'm committing this, uh, I'm making this commitment. If a conference implements 100% all of their churches on ACMS, I will make sure that that Sunplus download thing is done yesterday. <laughs> so let's, 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 let's hope for that after we are all <laughs> implemented. But anyway, it's good to first understand the manual so that when we automate things, we don't come to the auditor and say, we don't know what the system is doing. We just see figures coming in and going out. We don't know what they are doing. We want to make sure that <laughs> we understand exactly the accounting side and the background so that when we automate and there's a problem, we can even uh, sort it out. All right. Thank you very much uh, for listening, my people. Uh, and I'll hand over to Mr. Mbele. Mr. Mbele, please take over and let's see what needs to happen now. All right. Good morning. Good afternoon. Mm. Yeah, it's still morning, most of us. Hey, uh, Mr. Mbele, let, let me just introduce morning. you to those who might not know you so that uh, we, they don't think it's just another guy in jail just doing things. Mr. Mbele is our Sunplus uh, uh, coordinator per se at the SID. He is in charge of making sure that Sunplus are impl Sunplus implemented and uh, training is in charge of all of all things Sunplus. He is the one who we go to when we get confused because he's the one who knows what to do with Sunplus. So Mr. Mbele's job is to make sure that Sunplus is working well. If you have issues, he is the one who you contact. And now, because he has used ACMS and Sunplus, he's going to help us with this part that he's presenting. I hope the introduction is clear. Welcome, Mr. Mbele, uh, to the wonderful group of 166 accountants who are waiting and earnestly to hear from you. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Welcome to everyone. Uh, my role is to briefly give you some observations that we have on the capturing that we are engaged with. So the idea we have is to standardize what we are doing level once we have gotten the report from ACMS, what we are capturing onto Sun Systems. And so there are some basic transactions that we want to agree to get everybody to be following along with those. We've also made some observations of some accounts that uh, some conferences and some institutions where income uh, is um, at the risk of being qualified because certain transactions have not been carried out. And so it's important for us to on board 
and be on the same page on what needs to be done. Now, the I think it's it's transactions that we are all uh, doing on in our conferences. So we'll just have a, a look at those, and then we we agree upon what what conferences. So something like share my screen. Uh, can you shows these entries? Is this is this vi visible to to us where we are? Just want to get some confirmation there. Yes, yes it's visible. When we put out from from ACMS, uh, the entries that we are to capture are as shown on the screen. So the first entry that we normally do is the one where we debit either our bank or our church accounts when we've received the the deposits since from our churches. Right. So if you have received your your payment uh, before the close of the month and the deposits have been done within that month, you would then debit your your bank account by uh, crediting your your various income accounts. Remembering that the first account that you have is your tithe account, uh, and then you your resource codes and your fund, your function, which is represents your district code and your restriction and organization. This will help facilitate for the analysis to be done at the systems level. And so the many various reports that you'll be able to extract at that level will be powered by the function codes or the district codes or the organizational codes that you have posted there. And uh, this also applies to your the last line there where you have your, your non-tithe uh, line where you have your conference offerings. For most, for our division, that represents 40% of the 50% is retained at the local conference. So you need to make sure that you are capturing that into your income account. Whatever then needs to be remitted to the higher organization will come, the higher organization or whatever other organizations you are passing the offering to will be in the 361 combined offering account. I want to be. Uh, I want to hasten and, and and say that this clearing account is in fact a clearing account. So at the end of each month, we should ensure that that account clears to zero. So we shouldn't have a case whereby at the end of the year, this three six one account still has amounts sitting on it. That would represent probably a fact that uh, your income may be understated. Uh, which leads to the risk of it being uh, uh, qualified that section. Also, it would mean payables are not properly stated or they are stated in the wrong section. What you should have uh, credited to your higher organizations for offering may be omitted. So I would like to emphasize this and make sure that we are all on the same page and ensuring that our conferences, particularly the clearing accounts, are in fact cleared. So that's that's briefly um, all of us to be on board with. And then as, re as relates to the question of how we could arrive at a point where the reports from ACMS can be integrated or posted to some systems without uh, having the accountants to do so this is a, a project that is still underway. Uh, there are a couple of tests that we've been running where we envision a situation where the reports from ACMS can uh, be generated to whether a CSV file or use the, the application integration so that Whatever has been generated on ACMS can be easily posted to Sun Systems without uh, accountants 
integrating or interfacing with, uh, with ACMS or Sun Systems. So there, there's one possibility where a CSV file can be placed on, on the server in a particular location. Then with automation, Sun Systems can then post those uh, transactions without uh, uh, interaction with, with, with accountants. So this would uh, this means that reports should be generated from ACMS would have properly been validated and would be accurate enough not needing any 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 user interface or interaction on the conference side. So that's what as as as, as Mr. Moyer has mentioned, uh, once we have everyone on board and we have conferences that are um, maybe close to 100% uh, implemented in their conferences, this would be easy, easy to do. It would involve us also ensuring that the, the accounts or the analysis constant systems for churches are also bigger on the ACMS side of things. And so that would make uh, processing much simpler. So you will have less work to do on your end and probably the users that are complaining about the, the additional work that they have to do to actually capture uh, information from manual churches onto ACMS, maybe that time will be saved uh, from uh, the time that you would have otherwise spent on capturing from ACMS to Sun Systems, because that would step would be taken over by automation that Sun Systems caters for. That's uh, the a brief uh, summary of what uh, we have in place or what's coming up ahead. All right. So, so, so Ndabulo, I think uh, just to add to that last comment you made, uh, brethren, you, you know, and sisters, I, I want you to, to, to just take a step back and think about something. The amount of automation that we are currently having and the ease of access to information, having come from manual and now having an ACMS system that gives us this information. Some of us are complaining that it is uh, double work or it's too much work for us to do to capture from ACMS to SunPlus manually. I want to assure you, if you want, let's switch off ACMS for a conference that is implemented and see whether you will be happier doing the same work you're doing manually. Because sometimes we don't, we don't appreciate the incremental uh, benefits we get because we want the full, the full picture. It takes time to get to the full picture, but appreciate what you already have right now. Almost half of your work can be done by local church treasurers if you implement ACMS thoroughly in your conference. If I had warned a, a NCSA, they are, they are one of the conferences that are almost at 100% with, the, with the, the treasury module. They will tell you that uh, this is much easier to manage than when they were doing things manually without a system. Because now they have a page, that one page that shows them their income status as the conference without having to go through manual books and adding things manually and so on. What looks like pain right now is worse if you take a moment to look back where we are coming from. So I, I'm not begging for gratitude, but I'm asking you to reflect on where you're coming from before you start criticizing where we are and where we are going. So please take patience. Uh, Rome was not built in one day. This is a new system that we are configuring, adapting to make sure it works in our scenario in SID. But the future is bright. Where we are now is way better than where we are coming from. I can assure you. Uh, I'm not sure if South, uh, South uh, Namibia South is here with us. They will tell you that uh, where we are now is much, much better. Lulu, are you in the house? Maybe you can just share whether we should switch off ACMS and take you back to the manual. I'm not sure if you would agree with me, uh, Sister Lulu, if she's here, or anyone from uh, Namibia South, for instance. Anyone wants to comment on that part? Anyone who wants to do away with ACMS treasury module, who says this is too much work, uh, maybe we should take a vote in Bele and, uh, and agree that maybe we need to uh, decommission this project because it's adding more work to our accountants. <laughs> All right, okay. I think uh, the point is, I've made the point, it might be clearer. All right, so anyone else with a question or comment before we close, we are about to get to the end. 
uh, we have actually come to the end. Mbele, is there anything else you want to add on your side before we, we end this meeting? Okay, I see two hands. Uh, I'll start with uh, Mr. Shelton. Uh, thanks so much, elders, and uh, thanks, everyone. I'm just asking on uh, behalf of auditing section, I'm not sure if we're going to cover it again. Uh, what are the documents that we will need from the church treasurers when we are auditing? Because we, for example, we no longer need the receipts. So maybe it's the documents that we need that you can clarify so that we get, um, we don't mix up and don't ask them the traditional documents we ask them. Thank you. All right. Uh, I will answer that question in a, in a longish way. The longish way is that whatever you have access to in the system, you must not request from the treasurer. There's no treasurer who must be coming to reports here, which you can also get access to. Let me just share my screen quickly. No treasurer must be asked to, 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 to come to, where is that thing here? To reports here and come to income and click on and, you, and come to entity summary or come to financial monthly. You have access to this for every church. So it is not productive for us to be able to, 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 to do that. You should not be asking. Just hold on for me one second, please. One moment, uh, ladies and gentlemen. All right, so, so I was just comp commenting that any information that we have here, which we have access to, we should not be asking uh, church treasurers to send to us because it's the same system. If you come over here, you come to financial monthly summary, you are getting what they have access to. So why are you asking for this information when you can get it for yourself, number one. Number two, I've even gone to the point where I've said, we actually don't even need POPs anymore. Because we have access to our bank, most of us are on online banking. If you're on online banking, you can see transactions that were done today or yesterday. Why do we need uh, POPs to be sent by the treasurer to us when we can go into our bank and see the amount? Let's go open our bank statements, start capturing uh, the remittances, and life goes on. So we don't want any, any of that anymore because, by the way, if you are not aware, your bank statement which you download for yourself at the conference is more authentic than a POP, which has come from a third party. I know people will argue with me, but if you think about it slowly, it's correct. So let's use authentic documents. We use that bank statement as a backup and enter things that need to be entered and life is good. But we have an auditing module over here, which we need to set up for ourselves. Uh, when I say ourselves, I mean for SID. We have, not yet, we have not yet had a conference that is at this stage yet. NCSA is very close, and we are waiting for them to come and say to us, and, uh, and, and CC, uh, Cape Conference, let's set up the audit module. Once we set up this module, internal conference auditors will now be able to use this tool to run audits of the local church. So that's another thing that's already coming, which is an advantage. It will be a standardized system automated as, you, as the auditor answers those questions it will then formulate the audit report, which the pastor signs and it is filed for our records. So I hope that's, a, that's good news for some of us and it is on its way. All right, so I hope I've answered you, Brother Shelton. Uh, right now you can still continue doing the manual audit as you do, but we will get to a point where this is automated as well. Thank All you. right, next question, next one, uh, next hand. Uh, let's take uh, Riley. You're going to the last one. Uh, Masarata, let's go. All right. Uh, um, you were about to show us how to to add a church which is not on ACMS, which is still outside of ACMS. I don't know if you did complete that process. That's question one. And also, you were okay. Going to show All right. Us hold on. Hold on. Hold on, sister. Before we go any further, you come to configure treasury module. Click on new. Put the church. And make sure you check on manual here. That's how you edit. That means you can also put their tithe and offerings here. Yeah, if you want, you'll be able to do that. Or were you going to show us that? No, do it. Oh. <laughs> That's how you do it. Yeah. <laughs> do it okay. if you have okay. problems. And let us, let us know if you have problems. Okay, number two. You were, you, were, you were saying you were going to also show us how to upload the bank statement to ECMS. 
Okay, that one I will uh, have to do it with you on a one to one. Um, oh. It needs to be con it needs to be configured, so we will need to. Uh, it, it's a it's a process that we need to do. Okay, and lastly, uh -huh. Jabulo was talking about uh, being able to, what do you call this thing, taking information from ACMS to is it is it doable now or is it something that's going to happen in the future? Yeah, that one is like right now we are still doing it manually as you saw, but we are working on integrating it now so that it's a it's a file that you just download and upload into Sun. Okay, thank you. All right. Okay. All right. Uh, no Monday. Good Great. morning. Good morning to you all. Yes. Um, okay. Um, my question is actually a follow up from um, Sabata. Uh, configuration of the bank statements to ACMS. Are we supposed mm -hmm. to uh, make appointments with you for that? Yes. That's the summary of the question. <laughs> the answer is yes, because <laughs> we need we need we need to get samples because different banks have different OFX sample files, which we need to be able to configure that process for you. So we will need you to work with us because each country, each bank has its different format. So once that is done, when we have configured those files, then you'll be able to do that import. Okay. I uh, see. Does that mean that after this meeting, I can give you a call? Oh yeah, sure. <laughs> By all means. Okay, super. Second all question right. um, mm -hmm. on capturing onto ACMS uh, local church. Mm -hmm. I, I noticed that um, I, I can go to uh, item fifty-five and choose mm -hmm. eighteen lo local church, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Is the effect exactly the same as uh, using fifty-one for local church? Yes, madam. Depending on how your church is configured, let me explain. If your church is on the combined offering kind of plan, where you have agreed with the church that 50% of what is submitted to the church will be distributed to different departments of the local church, then combined offering, which I think is 51, the one you are referring to, will automate that process for you. But if somebody, uh, this is a debatable issue in most places, if somebody specifies that they want to give this money to local church budget, it's not combined offering. They are giving their offering to the local church. You don't want to use that combined offering because combined offering will split it. And you can argue with me all the way to court. We have no right to change what a giver has specified. So if they say they want to give to the local church or to the person in the department, do as such. Okay. So and essentially, why, no. Mm -hmm. Okay. Essentially, yeah. it's better to use so for local church offering. It's better to use fifty-five and eighteen. Yes, that is much better. Although, if that's what they, uh -huh. although a fifty-one would um, give uh, the same effect in our case, because uh -huh. all our local church uh, offering is hundred percent because ah, the that's, department, yeah. exactly. The so department, if that's the case, yeah. yeah. A self, yeah, a so, self funding. Yeah, so that's fine. So if they do that, if that's the understanding, go ahead and do that. It will save you a bit of time uh, from double entering and double making the process a little bit longer. Yeah. Okay. Because what I understood is that um, fifty five eighteen, it just mm -hmm. is a is a is a direct offering, right? Yes. 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 Yet that's at fifty one it would come out as a distributed offering, although it's a hundred percent. And also yes. what I needed to understand is that this hundred percent is hundred percent to look in the sense that um, in order uh, that's the question. Because yeah. it could be that, I don't know the policy, uh, I hope mm -hmm. this is the correct form to, to, to ask. It could be mm -hmm. that if you use 51, mm -hmm. it will be 100% local church in terms of no split uh, mm -hmm. contributions yes, to, to, depart, that, to departments. That's, yes, that's correct. So, mm -hmm. Yes, perfect, 100%. But I also need mm -hmm. to understand that uh, the 100% remains in the books of local church according to another uh, conference policy. There is no yes. other percentage that is taken by Northern Conference. Yes. So if it's combined offering, my sister, 
50% of that giving will stay in your local church, uh, local church budget account, where the 100% is. And then the other 50% will go to the conference. But if the giver says, I'm giving this to the local church directly, you would then just take 100% of it and post it into the local church budget, which is the 55 uh, slash 18 you were talking 18. about. Uh, yeah. Okay. So it's pointless right. to save time by using a, a, a 51 because the split it, is different. It, yeah, so that's what... So, you know, it would be, uh, it'll be very convenient if we could have a, a glossary of items, uh, sorry, of, um, yeah, a glossary of um, terms because mm -hmm. in simple English, you know what combined means, but uh, for the purposes of the system, combined has a, 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 a certain meaning and essence. Things okay. like combined, so, um, combined offering, distributed offering, direct offering, they might sound uh -huh. uh, simple and obvious, but not necessarily. So with yeah, your yeah, so, with the training uh -huh. material or, or videos, it'd be good to have something like a, a closed glossary of terms. Even if it's not so long, it can be only 10 items, but those items that could cause, uh, you know, confusion. confusion. Uh, yes. Okay. All right. So, so let me just summarize my, my system. Remember, we have local church offering. Local mm -hmm. church offering means this money is coming 100% to the local church. Yes. Uh, combined offering is conference plus local, uh, local church. And then the 55 slash 18 is direct offering, which you are putting straight into the local church. So mm -hmm. if you look at it closely, local church offering and the 55 slash 18 are the same thing exactly. The combined offering is the one that splits. And 51 I, is combined offering. Yes. Mm. Check, check the numbers. I'm, if I'm correct, combined offering is the one that is split. And then local church offering is 100% to the local church. And then the 55 is just the direct way of going to the local church offering. Mm -hmm. Mm. Yeah. All right. My sister, we want to close. Uh, let's move to Mr. Um, is it Michelle or Miss Michelle or Mrs. Michelle? Thank you. Thank you, Tembe. All right. Michelle, ah, she dropped off. All right. Uh, Hello. Last, Russell. Oh, okay, Michelle. Uh, is that uh, yeah? Yes, 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 sir. Uh, uh, the other one, I think you've answered and typed it. Now, the other question that I have is concerning the reports, the stewardship reports. At mm -hmm. the end of the quarter, we get so many questions. Treasurers get so many questions from stewardship. For example, they would want a report that would say type on, uh, type only, those that give type only, those mm -hmm. that are mm -hmm. givers, mm -hmm. and those that are writing mm -hmm. as a family. Uh, mm -hmm. How can we get to get those reports? Kindly assist on oh. that one. All right, uh, my brother, that one, um, there are some of these statistical analysis reports that I hear. You, we will need to just quickly delve into specific ones that you need, but we have quite a bit of reports that are accessible at the conference level, which have a lot of information that you can then use uh, for what you are looking for. So let's let's look let's talk about that on uh, offline so that we specifically look at what you are looking for and see how we can uh, work together to sort it out. Hello. Hello. All right, uh, Russell. Um, yes, mine, mine is not necessarily a question, but it's to just expand particularly on the auditing answer that you gave. We, we do have customized audit working papers um, specific for, for ACMS uh, to incorporate the processes so that there's no duplication of, of work. Um, an audit process by its very nature is a tracing process. So you're either tracing forward or you're tracing backwards. So you're either tracing from the source to the system or from the system to the source. Mm -hmm. So your two main reports there is the one under treasury transactions, which is the equivalent yeah. of your ledger which is the equivalent of your ledger in, in any accounting system. So if you actually extract the treasury transaction, it will look very similar to your SunPlus ledger. It even has balances and all those things. Um, 
Now, the important thing then is to trace those transactions to the source. Um, mm-hmm. And the expansion of those transactions you find on your monthly summary report, which gives you the expansion mm-hmm. of the individual batches that appear under treasury transaction. So Mm -hmm. the documents that are required for the audit are still the source. So you still need to get the bank statement of the church. Mm -hmm. You still need the tight envelopes. You still need whatever system you have as an intermediary between the two. So in Mm -hmm. our case, we have count sheets um, Mm -hmm. where they sign off uh, whatever system, whether you use a hardcover book, whatever system you, you use to verify completeness of tithe and offering is still mm-hmm. required. ACMS mm-hmm. directly replaces your cash book, whatever cash book you are using, whether you're using the big one, the small one, that you no longer need. Um, it also replaces the receipts. Um, it also replaces the reports that used to need to be sent by the, by the local yeah. church. Um, yeah. treasure yeah so I, I hope I, I hope I expanded enough yeah and, and then you didn't you didn't you didn't mention Russell that uh, we, we need to have an appointment to to start off uh, setting up uh, the online audit module you didn't mention that part yes we need uh, we need a Matthew 18. <laughs> no problem all right uh, Piri, you have the last one, we close this meeting Yes, Tembi. Yes, go ahead. Yes, go ahead. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've got um a few questions here. All right, let's fire away Hello? quickly so that we, we close the meeting. Okay. Uh, yeah. So the first one, uh, I asked this one, I asked this one in your in your DM, but mm-hmm. I did not get a clear answer. Okay. Um, you're talking about we'll now be doing manual entries for the offline churches, right? Mm-hmm. So now, how will the um, how will the pastor be able to to see the members that have given the tithe in the in ACMS? Since we're saying that we'll be entering those as a summary, so many will enter the entire tithe and uh, offerings and everything for the church meaning that mm-hmm. there, there won't be any individuals there. Mm-hmm. So how would they, right. how, when they go to the reports, how would they be able to see who gave tithe for, for this particular month? Yeah, that information will still be contained in the manual system that you currently use. So okay. what I'm saying right. is that we're, we're encouraging you to move to ACMS online because that one gives all the information that is needed. Okay. Um, then on on seven me, mm-hmm. there's currently no option for for indication of for committing offering. There's just mm-hmm. there's just only committing expense. But in mm-hmm. relation to committing offering, uh, last time Dr. P was telling me that we were supposed to be putting it in special projects, and then we probably like add a note underneath. But when okay. you now look at the monthly summary, it mm-hmm. now comes under special projects. And sometimes okay. here at the conference, uh-huh. uh, the person entering it in the in in some plus may not actually know that it's committing offering. Okay, so when you have such kind of specialized uh, offerings or anything that is specific to your union or your conference, please put the request in writing, and then we'll implement that specific. For instance, if your conference wants to have an ADRA uh, offering or whatever union uh, offering that you have. If you request it, we will then add it as a special just for your conference, and then it will make your life easier. Okay. Yeah, that's All it. Right. Then uh, there's been a, a few uh, requests from our treasurers, um, in particular, like on the receipts. Mm-hmm. Can you still hear me? Yeah, clear. Okay, in particular, on the receipts, they were requesting that. Um, um, the font on there where it says notes can be made bigger because uh, when they usually just put there, it, some of them, they're not able to really read uh, what is written under the notes. So they're requesting if the font could be made slightly bigger so that they're able to read what it says. No problem. Just put that one in writing as well as a request and then we'll process it upwards. Okay. All right, I think All right. I'm done then. All right. 
And then um, this will be the very last one. Um, family giving. We are currently, um, we've asked the GC to make sure there's functionality for, for family giving and it's coming to you soon, very, very soon. So that you have reports that are family based. You have um, a, all functionality has, has to do with the family because right now the system records as an individual baptized member. It's not an error. It's just one preference over the other. So let's make sure that um, we keep our eyes and ears open for that one. Once it's re released, we'll communicate and you'll be able now to appreciate uh, the family giving uh, functionality. All right, mm -hmm. elders, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for your time. I will ask uh, Jonathan Peary to please close for us in prayer. I hope you're at your desk, Peary. <laughs> Hey, Bob. Yes, sir. Yeah, you, you take the sins of the brothers. Please pray for us. <laughs> <laughs> but the Bible does not allow that. <laughs> <laughs> Please pray for us, Bob. <laughs> All right, let us go ahead. Shall we pray? Our kind and loving Father, right in heaven, come before your throne of mercy this afternoon with gratitude in our hearts for having accorded us this opportunity to gather in such a manner to learn about matters pertaining to your work. I want to ask and pray that uh, everything that was presented here may have a profound effect on each and every one of us. Be with us so that we may be able to understand each and everything that was presented, be able to work better and also efficiently, more effectively in all our works. We pray that even as we're about uh, to depart now, may you please continue to be with us throughout the rest of this day. Help us to work efficiently as also effectively. And we pray also that um, even um, for the future meetings, we ask that you continue to uh, be with us. And that Father, at the end of it all, may your name be glorified. This we pray through the mighty Jesus Christ, thanksgiving in our hearts. Amen. 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 Thank you very much, everyone, for coming. Have a good day, and we will talk at another time. Amen. Amen.